Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Chad with Flatline Fiber Co. I'm Jeffrey. I help with some of the R&D here at Flatline. Um, new products, stuff like that. Uh, today we're going to talk to you guys about how to choose the correct rifle sling. So at Flatline Fiber Co. we offer two kinds of rifle slings. A padded rifle sling and a standard slate rifle sling. Um, so Jeff, I know that you run a standard rifle sling primarily. Yep. You've ran both, but you prefer the standard sling actually. So why is that? Yeah, overall, I just like the low profile of the standard sling. So I use an LBX uh, bag and like my Mark 18 fits in there perfect with the suppressor and I'm able to keep uh, my brace at the correct length. So when I pull that thing out, I'm good to go. So I just like the low profile mm -hmm. here because I also stow like mags in there and stuff like that. So I don't want anything like thicker that might get hung up as I'm pulling out of that bag right. so I just really like the low profile um, and for the most part you know shooting in like a necklace position and moving around mm -hmm. my rifle is not normally just like chilling on my shoulder when I'm out right. of the range so for me it's just really you know easy to use it's um, free flowing and stuff right too very yep yep because with the padded um, like it's kind of hard to explain but you can sort of you can feel that it's padded. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. even when it's necklace. So mm -hmm. with this, it just, yeah, it stays loose, it flows. Um, it's just kind of a preference thing. I suppose if you had like a, uh, a law folder or you had a, uh, a sub gun or something like that, that folds up, you really would want that to be able to, the sling to be able to fold with the folder True. and have, and you know, fit in your bag a little bit easier right yep yep definitely because like with this it would eventually uh it would eventually just like crease the sling wherever it goes right um, and it would it'll be easy to fold but also right do you really want that it'll do it but if you're trying to run super low profile yeah um, this would be that's the easy. way to go yep yeah um i think a lot of guys too that run um a lot of kit and whatnot um, they already have like a collared shirt on or something, so they're not worried about it chafing their neck or whatever. Yep. They want just super minimalist stuff, um, so it's going to flow really nice over their kit and everything too. So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, not that our padded sling can't do that. And speaking of, um, I actually prefer the padded sling. Um, I don't run kit all the time. Um, I'm normally at this at the uh, the range training mm -hmm. um, where you know you might spend an eight hour day out on the range eight ten hour day uh, Georgia heat is 90 degrees um, you're sweating uh, your necks already sunburned so the padded rifle sling just offers me a little bit more comfort uh, it helps uh, with load distribution yeah. um, so I just really like the padded sling my rifle um, you know, with the can on and everything, it is it is decently heavy. It's not like really heavy, but if I had an LPBO on this thing or something, yeah, and then it really beefs up the weight. Yep. This padded sling is just going to be really comfortable for me. Um, I don't run a folder. Um, my gun's fairly long. I really don't keep it in a bag a whole lot. I normally just stow it on the side of my rifle, stick it in the side of my truck. Um, so that's how I run it. Yeah. Um, I like the comfort of the padded sling. For sure, yeah. The load distribution is definitely something I've noticed. Like, so when I run the 13.7, uh, I have a Ranger padded that I run on that one. Mm -hmm. And it really does stay, like, it's, it's pretty noticeable in a class setting when you are, like, you know, just stowing your rifle the whole time. It's just, like, low port or whatever, just yeah. resting. If you're just standing there listening to an instructor and you've got this with a heavy rifle, right. you do start to notice your sling is there. Like right. you can notice it like up here in your traps and stuff versus this, like it's there obviously, right. but you definitely notice that it kind of offers some relief in those settings. Right. And that's another thing too, you know, the padded sling is great for um, if you're on duty or you're pulling security or something and you're kind of hanging out in the same place, you got a rifle slung over the front of you all day long. Um, the padded sling is really going to be where it's at for all day comfort too. Yeah. And like, you know, the last thing too really is like, um, even though it, uh, even though it has like no practical value, uh, some people just like it for the looks as well. The padded oh, yeah. sling looks really cool. Yeah, like, for sure. Just, just a little bit of extra, you know, on yeah. there versus just this is, uh, you know, just straight up nylon webbing. So this just kind of offers like right. just a little more excitement, I guess. Yeah. Absolutely. So Chad, we've got our standard sling, we've got the padded sling. We've talked about like the reasons that we may lean towards one or the other. Is there anything I like would need to know as a new 
uh, shooter, mm -hmm. uh, if I'm on your website purchasing a sling, is there anything I need to know? Like, is there differences of these slings outside of maybe comfort or looks like we discussed? Right. Um, both of them are constructed of like a one inch webbing um, that's nice and heavy duty and uh, is really, you know, really durable. Um, both of them have the same quick adjust pull tab. Um, so you can bring the rifle nice and tight to your body or loosen it up and get it uh, so you can get to work. Um, they also both uh, attach the same way. They're open-ended so you can put whatever piece of hardware you want on mm -hmm. them. Yep. Uh, you can run a piece of paracord through it, HK clips, whatever funky piece of hardware that's out there. Yep. Um, I prefer to use uh, just regular QD swivels. Yeah, we offer I do as well. On, we offer those on the website as well. Cool. So we've talked about different versions of our rifle sling. Um, so now let's talk about different ways to mount your rifle sling to your actual rifle, different locations, uh, different methods and whatnot. So how do you like to mount your rifle sling? So um, there's lots of different ways, obviously, and I've gone through a few. Um, I've done it this way before to where you mount it like all the way out mm -hmm. um, on the front. All the way forward, all the way aft. Yep. and then on the opposite side. I, I really like the opposite side, we'll get into that. Um, but I've done it this way before. Where I'm at right now is actually mounted more like this one here. Mm -hmm. So mine is more, mine's closer. And on my Mark 18, I actually have it on the rail, uh, like a QD mount on the rail right here. And so it's even a few inches closer to, uh, to the upper here. Okay. So I mount mine right here and then on the opposite side. Um, right. So on the opposite like, side. The opposite side, uh, I find that whenever I cinch my sling down, whenever I'm just stowing it, uh, it helps keep it uh, against my body, which yep. helps me keep my super hot suppressor off my leg a little bit. Yeah. So it just kind of naturally orients yeah. the rifle that way. Um, also, I find that it's easier for me whenever I'm um, like swapping sides, so going mm -hmm. from strong side uh, to support side and transitions. Um, it helps my sling like not really get hung up. Right. Um, it's not wedged between your stock and your shoulder. Correct. And yep. it also kind of keeps that stock right where it needs to be in your shoulder too. Correct. Right? So, so like when you can I'm bring it up easy. Right. So when I'm mounting uh, just strong side, um, it keeps this hardware out of my way. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not like getting pinched between my brace or my stock and my shoulder because that can be kind of uncomfortable. So it keeps this out of my way. Yep. But also when transitioning. You see how it just swings yeah, over there. Absolutely. So again, it stays out of your way. Yeah. So I, I find that to be pretty useful and really comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, but then, like I said, just kind of the, the main thing that led me to that was, hey, I have this super hot suppressor and I need it off my leg. So right. it really helps um, kind of pull away naturally. So I really like that. Right. So um, I ran mine like this for a really long time, all the way forward and all the way aft on my stock. Um, so this is my rifle. Um, right now, I started playing with running uh, the QD mount a little bit further aft instead of forward. So that did a couple things for me, I feel like. Um, it freed up some stuff on the handguard. Mm -hmm. um, so when I could get, I got my grip up here, I didn't have to worry about where is this QD at? Where's my sling at? Cause I don't want to grab, you know, like a bunch of sling. Yep because that interferes with the manipulation yep. of, of the rifle and it's just uncomfortable. So it freed up a bunch up here. I was able to move my rail scales a little bit more forward. Um, it just, it aided in that, right? Um, also, it kind of helps me um, with the manipulation when the rifle is a little bit more tight to my body. Yep. It allows it to get a little bit more tight to your body. Um, but all of this really where it's mounted comes down to preference Agreed. and i want to encourage everybody to just play with it put it in different places buy different pieces of hardware and just run it that's the yep. biggest thing with all of this is run your gear train with it um, and just find out what's right for you because with any piece of kit any piece of gear it might not be for you but that's why we're ex we experiment with our stuff to find out to really get in tune with it so we can perform the best, right? Yep. Um, yeah, we always talk about like reasons why we're doing something and you're not gonna have a reason why unless you 
try it right and identify a problem mm -hmm. and then relocate or change hardware or change positioning yeah. to fix the problem now you have a why right. you know because i used to do it this way i found that i was running into this problem this is how i solved it now i'm doing it this way so it's just you know just that evolution and we do that with everything but this is just one small thing so this is another method right so mounting this to the yep. back plate i believe this is called um so that just it, it gives you a different feel it also this the the stock or the brace flows a little bit different on your body mm -hmm. the rifle is going to sit different against your body i haven't really played with this method very much um because what i really like is running this on the opposite side like you as well yep um and when my <clears throat> rifle is stowed to me or it's on my back yep or whatever it just feels the most secure in my opinion um, agreed. Yeah, especially so. Yeah, especially when you have it like cinched down. I agree that it's more comfortable. So I actually did used to run like my first AR. I ran mine that way. I ran it right here mm -hmm. and then here, mm -hmm. and it was awesome maneuverability wise uh, for like the stock or the brace in terms of like swapping Shh. shoulders. Yeah. But it is like less stable feeling. I feel like whenever it's like cinched down. Yeah. And again, just the pro of keeping like everything hot like away from your leg I, I want to mm -hmm. say it was like mil spec mojo or somebody that i uh, watched the video um and they made that point and i was like ooh, like that's a that's yeah. a solid point it's valid. and when i tried it i agree like yeah that definitely helps pull it away so mm -hmm. it's just something gives you one last thing to think about and it does feel more secure whenever right. whenever you cinch it down so so and that and that kind of brings it to the the topic of uh how you you're attaching hardware right yep so i like to use um, QDs, one inch QDs um, that we sell on our website. Um, they can be attached to the end of the slings. Um, there's a ton of adjustment in this thing, right? Yep. Um, but I also, what's also very important to me is the receiver, the M block receiver for the, the QD. Some of them will allow your QD to free spin. Yep. And I don't really like that. Um, to be honest with you, mine locks in there, it doesn't swivel. The sling still will free flow just fine. Yep. But what that helps me with is this number right here. My, so it, it, sling get all twisted and up. it all comes down to training, but my sling might get super twisted up or whatever. And that's going to create a bind in yep. my opinion. Um, you should always know where your adjustment is on your sling. And that just comes down to training, mm -hmm. right? You're going to, if it's loose, it's here. If it's tight, it's here. Um, and you can just run your hand up and down the sling yep. until you hit that piece of hardware. You don't even have to grab this pull tab. It's just there to help you. You can just grab that piece of hardware, right? Yep, just with your finger, yep. But I just I just really like the QDs just lock in. I mean, I agree. You know. Hey, Joseph, will you hand me that right there? Yep. I like the QDs as well. These are the QDs that I run. They're, like, they're the BCM, like smaller ones. Um, the reason I like them is because like on my market team reel, um, talking about that locking position, mm -hmm. I'm able to put it in a place and like orient the position to keep this out of my grip. So like when I get that C clamp grip, I don't have, I'm a left hand shooter, I don't have this like wad of a QD in the back of my hand. So yeah. it's smaller and then I also can orient it away from my hand. Mm -hmm. So I really like that as well. So lots of different options with actual QDs. Um, and like we talked about earlier with the slings being open-ended and you can use whatever you want. You can use HK clips, paracord. Um, John uses paracord. That seems to like work really well. Yeah, you can use- I've never uh, tried it myself, but- um, That's like weird it. looking uh, piece of hardware that has like a, a metal uh, wire through it that's coated in plastic or something. Yeah, I've seen those, yep. They're kind of chunky, but um, I mean, that might be something that you would use on maybe a heavier rifle or something. I don't really yeah. know, to be honest with you, but people use it. those things. Um, that's the biggest thing, guys, is just uh, just play with your kit, run it, and, uh, you know, just kind of customize it to your liking. Yeah, yeah, and like at some point, I keep telling myself I would like to try a different mounting option because I don't really have any... I don't have anything to offer when people ask me about HK clips or paracord or whatever. Yeah. Never tried it. I've just used QDs. They work for me. I don't have an issue with them. So I just don't really, um, 
I don't have any uh, experience with anything else, but I would like to uh, to do that just to I'll say, figure out if there's pros and cons. I'll say that the, the HK clips, what I have seen, is just the design, the inherent design of the HK clip. It really doesn't matter, matter the brand so much, but the little spring-loaded clip on it, mm -hmm. um, if, it ha if it's impacted with something, um, that bends fairly easy, and then it that, that hook doesn't lock in there, so it can offset it. Yeah, and then it will legit just fall off. Yeah, that so makes I sense. just don't, you know, that's not me. But you know, some of the AK guys like that kind of stuff. Um, One thing whatever. that's kind of got me thinking about the paracord is like, as I'm, my brain's just like running here with us talking about all this. Um, so like John mounts his with the paracord. Yeah, I could see that being a big benefit for me for the same reasons that I was just talking about the placement and orientation oh, with yeah. my smaller clips because oh, there yeah. wouldn't really be anything like affecting yeah. uh, my grip. And I say affecting my grip, like it's, you know, it's at the end no, of the day you get over it and just shoot however like, you mount it's it. No it. Weight, <laughs> it's no weight to, I mean with the paracord, mm -hmm. you can you just make a loop literally and put it over the handguard and cinch it tight. You can little, use a little piece of tube or something to like, it'll lock that into position yep. or electrical tape or something, but you can just run it, run it like the paracord through the Picatinny right there. Yeah. And like, it's it's super low profile set. It just doesn't get in your way. And it does allow for the most movement out of any method. It just, it flows. And some guys like to run cuties up front and paracord on the back. Hmm. So, or you can run, you can run paracord so. on both sides. Like, yeah. so if you like the end of it to be really locked in, like we talked about, yep. you could run a QD there and paracord, paracord up, up here. Front. That's going to change, the paracord's going to change the whole length of the sling. So you're just going to have to, you know, play with all the adjustment yeah. in the sling. Yeah. Yeah, I might try that soon. Cool. Now that we've talked about it. So I like to stow my rifle sling on the side of my rifle, like this one here. Um, we make these bands. There's it's a simple elastic band, nothing fancy. Um, but our customers asked for a solution that, that was cost effective for them. They didn't want to spend a whole lot of money on it. Um, so we made this a super easy option. Um, so you can stow your rifle sling on the side of your rifle. I like to use them. Um, when my sling's not in use, I don't want it dangling around, um, getting hung up on stuff. So especially when I'm putting it in my truck mm -hmm. and I need, if I need to deploy it, I can grab my rifle and that sling's not going to get hung up on my gear shifter or something. Yep. When I put my rifles in my safe for whatever reason, if I need to get a rifle or gun quickly, I can grab it and it's not, I'm not pulling out the whole safe. Right, you know yeah, you don't have like a chunk of your sling just like snagging another right. rifle or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. And like professional use, you know, if you have to ride around with, a, you know, a gun in your front seat or whatever, um, and you uh, potentially are in situations where you're having to like get out of your vehicle or work from your vehicle with the rifle, mm -hmm. uh, this just offers you a solution to be able to still, you know, function with the rifle. You can still get to all your controls, still yeah. get to your trigger and everything. Um, it's not hindering you from being able to use the rifle and manipulate it, and then you can just pop it out whenever you, you know, get out of your car. Yeah. Um, so that was something, another thing that, why I liked uh, mounting this uh, a little bit more aft, um, is that when my rifle sling is stowed on this, I can get a full grip, even and, and the sling yeah. can stay there, where before everything's forward, um, and I, the sling was stowed, I would grab it and there would be a bunch of sling out there. You yep. know what I mean? Um, and it was just a little awkward for me. So for, with me being a lefty, I just haven't really figured out a way that I can mount it where I need it without yeah. it covering up the ejection port. Mm -hmm. um, I've shot it a little bit uh, with the sling stowed just to see if it would cause a malfunction. And the few rounds that I shot, there was no malfunction. It just doesn't it all it'll it doesn't sit right, sit right with yeah. me. Yeah, exactly. Like I think it could like very easily cause a malfunction. Yeah. Um, so I haven't really tested it long, but so if you're a lefty, it's just something to consider. Um, you you know, in this type of configuration, you would be mounting your sling directly over the ejection port. Mm -hmm. So um, just you know, something to consider. And you can also mount them on the back, like how you've got it here. 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you can always wrap it around like this. And you can also use, you know, whatever you've got laying around, ranger bands, all that good stuff. This just right. offers you something that's just, you know, it's a, probably a little bit longer lasting than something like a ranger band. Um, you know, especially if you're out in the sun and stuff all the time. Um, it ranger offers, bands eventually could dry out, pop, or whatever. Yeah, it offers a little bit more surface area, too, because yep. um, a ranger band's like a rubber band. Um, this offers, you can use it for cable management, too, if that's what your mm -hmm. what's problem you have. Um, I honestly think one of the best solutions is um, is a century strap that Neomag makes. Yep. Um, you can stow your sling really quickly and it deploys really easily. Agreed. Um, but that's, I've been that's using the best these. in the business there. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome, and uh, those are good guys over there. But um, th this is just a really easy option, you know, um, and they're like five bucks, so yep. you're not going to break the bank. Um, and they're easy for us to make. So. Yep. And they come in all the different colors too, so you can match it with your sling or do something random or whatever you want. So right. they, they come in all the different colors. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys, so I think we've uh, given you a pretty good brief overview of what we offer for rifle slings, how to select the right rifle sling, how to set it up. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to Send us an email, reach out to us on all the social media platforms. We're there to help. Um, also, um, you know, hit the link down below, check out our website and see what we offer. Um, don't forget, everything has free shipping. Everything is made in America, in-house by us. So um, it's easy for us to have good lifetime customer warranty. service. Yeah, lifetime warranty on everything too. Everything's super durable, so you won't have to worry about it really. Um, but if it's something does happen, uh, we cover it if it breaks on the job, you slam it in your car door, whatever. If it's for your yep. own stupidity, like we don't really care. We're going to take care of you. So, yeah. Um, again, give us a follow on Instagram, Facebook, here on YouTube. Hit the like button. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. And we would really like to know how you like to set up your rifle sling. Yeah. And do you prefer the padded sling or the standard sling? Thanks, guys, and we appreciate it.